Hey, it's Steve, and if you couldn't tell from that introduction, this time we're looking at the Xtool P2. This is a 55 watt CO2 laser, and it's Xtool's first foray into the CO2 space, and I think it's a great first attempt. Now, we'll take a look at the laser. I'll run it through some benchmarks that I would normally run on diode lasers, but we'll try them here. I'll also do some real world projects so you can see some of the things you can do with this laser that maybe you can't do with a diode laser. And I'll take a quick look as part of this at the new XCS, XCS2, which I'm using exclusively in this video and, and from now on. And I'll, I'll walk through that, though I won't do a complete review of that. I'll save a separate video for that later. And I'll also maybe in that video draw some comparison to Lightburn. Maybe it's the time to switch over if you're using an Xtool product and you just want to use XCS. So we'll do that. Uh, and I'll also look at some competition in this space and we'll see how this laser compares to, to other CO2 vendors. And I'll give you a bit of sticker shock on the price as well. If you're in the diode space and that's where your mindset is, I'll tell you right now, this laser is a lot more expensive than a diode laser. And that's maybe out of your budget or maybe you haven't thought about that budget, but it's really a good thing if you wanna do additional things that you can't possibly do with a diode laser. So that's a lot to roll into a, a video and we'll, I'll try and keep it as short as possible, but uh, hopefully you get a good feel for what the Xtool P2 does. So let's get going. Before we jump into some benchmark testing and results, let's take a quick look at the specs on this Xtool P2. Uh, top speed here, 600 millimeters a second. That's very quick. And that's a cutting speed, which is definitely faster than you're gonna be able to cut anything on a, on a diode laser, even a 40 watt diode laser uh, will be substantially slower than this laser at cutting. The workspace, the actual piece of material you can put in here, the biggest is 23 by 12 inches, about 580 by 300 millimeters. Uh, the height is two and a half inches. Uh, that's with the bed in it, but you can pull those knife edge rails out and you can gain a little bit of height. And if you need more height, you can either get the X-Tool riser for the P2, or you can build a box and, and lift your laser up and put whatever material you need underneath it to, to do your work. Uh, lots of safety features here. Uh, we'll start with the obvious ones. The electronic emergency stop is there. I showed you at the beginning. The entire laser is built into an enclosure. Now my enclosure is a class four enclosure, but if you are maybe in a busy environment where there's people wandering around without safety glasses, you can order a class one enclosure from Xtool, which is a nice capability. So keep that in mind. Uh, and the last one I'll note here is there's a locking mechanism on the lid. So when you start a job, you'll hear a big click and that's actually a bolt sliding into the lid so that you can't open the lid and that's a really nice safety feature. Uh, overall features, there's two cameras built into this laser. There's an overall uh, top level camera that takes a photo of the entire workspace and you can use that for coarse positioning of material. But there's also a fine camera built into the laser module itself. And that one is used for fine positioning. And Xtool actually did a video where they used that camera to engrave their logo on, on a toothpick. And we'll try that. I'll try that test again just to see if I can reproduce it. Uh, and uh, they use the fine camera for that. There's also a built-in cooler here. Diode lasers generally don't need liquid cooling, but CO2 lasers do. It's a big glass tube in the back and, and they pump water through it. That cooler is built into the laser. It's just an air to air cooler, so or air to liquid cooler. So it's not like a chiller, but it does keep the laser cool enough to operate in a typical room temperature environment. Uh, there's also air assist here for cutting. You'll see if you pop the lid off the laser module and I showed at the beginning with it off, there's a coily air hose there that, that runs down to the nozzle and that keeps soot and, and just dust out of the cutting area when, when you're working, lets you just cut better and cut cleaner. Uh, last thing on the list here is the weight. This thing is not your, your, your father's uh, open frame diode laser. This thing weighs 100 pounds. It's pretty heavy even without the, the liquid cooling in it. So add a couple more pounds for, for all the water you're gonna put in it. This thing's pretty heavy. When I put it up on my workbench behind me, I actually enlisted the help of a friend because there is realistically no way you're gonna lift this thing. It's big and it's heavy. So. Uh, use help if you get one of these, uh, you know, find someone who can help you lift it up on a bench. That's the specs. Uh, let's take a look at some benchmarks and I'll run the standard ones I normally run on diode lasers just so we can compare. 
and we'll see what the output looks like. So I ran my standard benchmarks. Now the ranges here are different than they would be for a diode laser, but same tests. Uh, you can see the cut test I did, then the engraving test. I'm getting pretty close to that 600 millimeters a second. Uh, the uh, gradient test, and we'll talk more about that in a second, and the standard dog test. Now you're gonna look at this dog test and you're gonna think it's pretty bad. We'll talk about that as well. So when we look at the results, you can see that the cutting at 30 millimeters a second, that's, that's 1800 millimeters a minute, uh, is very fast compared to a diode laser. Uh, cut, uh, the engraving, we're getting pretty close to that 600 millimeters a second. We could have easily got there. And you'll notice not a lot of difference in the gradient test. And when I did the dog, it actually looked pretty terrible. You're going to say this is awful. And that's because CO2 lasers aren't really good at doing grayscale. So I did a dither here with Jarvis and you can see the dog actually comes out much better. All in all, those benchmark tests look pretty good, especially cutting, which is honestly where a CO2 laser excels. And you could see at the 80, 90, 100% power range, I was still at 1800 millimeters a minute and still cutting. By comparison in that same power range on, an, on a 40 watt X-Tool S1, a diode laser, uh, I was only at 700 millimeters a minute. So the P2 is more than twice as fast at cutting than, than a 40 watt certainly the S1, but pretty much any 40 watt would be the same. So if you want cutting speed, CO2 lasers rock. If you want engraving, a five watt diode laser might be your choice, but a CO2 laser can do an adequate job at engraving as well. And more importantly, you can do it on different materials. So let's take a look at a couple of projects and we'll see where we get to. So I created a few real projects here, nothing too dramatic, just a standard metal business card with the lighthouse on it. This is dithered. I used XCS for all of these samples. Uh, then I created a, a coaster, just simple cork coaster, five millimeter thick, and put Marvin the Martian on it. Again, the settings, I just kind of guessed it looked all right. I wanted to try the fine resolution camera, so I, I put my logo on a stir stick for coffee, and that came out all right very accurate actually and then i did a real project this is the solenoid uh, box for my cnc that i've been working on and i'll probably have this design available at some point for everybody so let's have a quick conversation about the competition for the xtool p2 the most obvious one is the glowforge pro it's a little smaller workspace a couple inches smaller in the width than the p2 uh, it's also a 45 watt laser versus a 55 in the P2, so it's got less power. And the ecosystem is a little more locked in than the ecosystem in, in the X-Tool world. So uh, that in itself, none of those are really damning, except that this laser is a, quite a bit more money than the X-Tool P2. And it's currently on sale uh, for $1,000 off and it's still $6,000. All of that to say, maybe this isn't your best option and the P2 I think wins all around here in so many ways compared to the Glowforge. But if we do look at the other end of the spectrum, let's say we come across the Omtech desktop laser. It's a 50 watt laser. So almost around the same size uh, power wise. It's also got a fairly big workspace at 20 inches by, by 12. So again, a little smaller, but not too bad. It has a built-in fan, a built-in chiller. It has all the things that you would expect. What it doesn't have is an ecosystem, and you're gonna drop another $80, $100 to buy Lightburn. It's currently on sale right now for about $3,400. So it's a bit cheaper than the P2, but you do lose a few things as well. So again, I think the x P2 is probably worth the extra money just because you get that big ecosystem and a lot of project databases and material databases that you don't get with the Omtech and you have to kind of figure that stuff out yourself. All in all, I would highly recommend this laser if you're in the market for a CO2 laser. Uh, the build quality here is exceptional and the design is really, really great. They, they've thought of everything so you won't have any trouble from, a, from an operating standpoint. The ecosystem around the, the X-Tool P2 and honestly the entire X-Tool product line is amazing, especially if you're using XCS. Uh, you can find anything you need in that ecosystem and there's thousands of users that have probably run into some of the problems you have and they are happy to help. And there's lots of documentation. A lot of it is available inside XCS, like the material database. And there's also a Facebook group as well as lots of documentation on their website. 
On the downside, the price here is a bit high. Uh, if you're coming from the diode laser world where you think a $1,200 laser is expensive, uh, get ready for this because this laser price of entry is about $4,300 and you can very quickly get these lasers up to maybe $6,000 if you're adding things like the riser and the and the carousel or the slider for, for longer material and maybe a fume extractor, you're going to pay a fairly substantial price. Uh, the only real downside I think where they drop the ball on the design is the lid rather than being glass is acrylic. That in itself is good because acrylic is particularly good at, at, at protecting you from stray CO2 reflections, but uh, it's prone to scratching. So, you know, if you see somebody getting ready to put, a, you know, something on top of your laser, you might want to get ready to yell at them because if you get a scratch on this, uh, and it will if it's soft acrylic, uh, you're gonna you're gonna complain about it forever and there is a bit of consideration around vendor lock-in here although all of the entire product line of Xtool you can run with light burn the advanced features that are more than just every what every laser has like like contoured focusing for example uh, those are only available from XCS so keep all of that stuff in mind uh, anyway, I'll put an affiliate link down below if you do want to pick one of these up or some other Xtool product, uh, feel free to use those links. It really helps out the channel because I get a little bit of money back when you buy something from Xtool using those links and that helps out the channel. So uh, with that, we'll wind down and I'll say get out there, make your world and I hope to see you next time.